So I'm getting ready to make some cinnamon rolls and I have a really awesome recipe that I just love. I've only made it a couple of times though, but every time that I've made it, they've turned out really delicious. The recipe comes from the new Artisan Bread in 5 Minutes a Day book. That book is really awesome. I have a copy of it here on my Kindle and I really, really, really want to get the hard copy of it because I find recipe books are so much nicer in print rather than digital. I'm doing the brioche recipe that they have in there and going to make it into cinnamon rolls. So the first thing you want to do is take your warm water and put it in a bowl and you need like you need a six quart container. The first time I did this I mixed it up in a gallon bucket thinking that it would be big enough for it but when it rose it rose all down the bucket and it just ran all down the cabinet. It was a huge mess. So be sure that you use a, a big enough container. I have no idea even if this is big enough. This is as big as I could find, so I'm hoping it works. I can't remember what I used last time for it. And then you just put your yeast in the water and let it dissolve. And okay, Once you get your yeast and water mixed together, then it says to go ahead and add the salt, and it's one tablespoon of salt. Okay. I just remembered I forgot to tell you the amount of water. It's one and a half cups of water, a tablespoon of yeast, and you mix that together and get it dissolved in there, and then you add your tablespoon of salt and eight eggs, and you want to beat them before you add them, and a half a cup of honey. Oh, and three sticks of melted butter. Okay. Wow, is this a double batch or just one batch? This recipe will do three one and a half pound loaves of bread. So this is a huge, huge batch. Um, what I like about this is you put it in your container, you let it rise for a couple of hours, and then you have to refrigerate it before you can use it. And then it stores in the refrigerator for up to five days. And then you can just get out the amount you want to use and use it for whatever you want to use it for. It's really, really handy because then you've just got your, your dough already made up. And in this book here that I have, um, they have all sorts of recipes and you know I've tried several different ones and some have been, been successful at others I haven't but it's just really handy because if you like fresh bread you can just mix it up in a big container and keep it in the fridge and then you just you just get out the amount of dough that you want to work with every day or, or whatever even if it's just a little bit you want to make a few rolls or something like that you can get it out and use it for all the recipes that they have in their book they want you to use just regular all-purpose flour that's unbleached instead of bread flour. And I forget the reason why, but they explain it in the book. So if you get the book, then you can read exactly why they recommend that flour instead of the other kind of flour. It's just been a while since I've read the book and I forgot all the details. <laughs> they have a special way that they recommend that you measure your flour and it's called the scoop and sweep method and they just you just scoop it in there and you just sweep it okay in this recipe you need to put seven and a half cups of flour in so that's two okay and there's the half Okay, once you get the flour in, you just mix it up. And the dough will turn out very sticky. But that is okay, because that is the way you want it. You won't be able to work with the dough at all. But then once it has sat for two hours, 
and then you put it in the refrigerator for about five, then it will be really easy to work with. Here's what the dough looks like when you are done. So next we'll cover it loosely with a lid and let it set for um, two hours. Gonna check on the dough real quick and see how it looks. risen quite a bit. Now what I'm going to do is just put it in the fridge and then we will make cinnamon rolls tomorrow. Okay so the dough sat in the refrigerator overnight and now we're ready to see how it turned out and start making our cinnamon rolls. And that's how it turned out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take about a third of it to make one batch. Okay, and then what you're supposed to do is um, knead the dough for about 30 seconds or so. Okay, and so what we're going to have to do is just let this dough sit for just a little bit to warm up for maybe about 20 minutes and then after that it will be ready to roll out. Okay, so our dough is now ready to be rolled out. What you want to do is just roll it into a rectangle. You basically want to roll it to a thickness of a quarter of an inch. Okay. Then once your dough is rolled out, then next you just spread butter on. soft but it probably does need a little warm molten. Just use the parts. I always like to leave a little edge right there with no butter or cinnamon sugar on it. That way you can kind of seal it when you roll it up. The next comes the cinnamon sugar. I have a half a cup of white sugar and a half a cup of brown sugar and a tablespoon of cinnamon. Oop. I like to get the edge that's going to be in the center. I like to get it really cinnamony because I love the, the middle of it, the rolls to be very cinnamony. And then once you get your cinnamon and sugar all on there, it's time to roll it up. You can just start from one end and just roll it. And I like to just pinch the edge onto the roll so that way it kind of stays together. Now it's time to cut them. I usually cut them about maybe 
what, two inches or inch and a half or so. And then you place them on your tray right there. I like to cover a tray with parchment paper and put them on like that. But you can also butter a baking dish. What were you going to say something? Uh, um, I was just saying that the baking dish. Okay. Yeah, it's probably more like an inch and a half or so. Yeah. Um, you can use dental floss or something like that to cut it with. But I like this. I have a really sharp serrated steak knife that works really well. After raise for oh, no, two hours. Patience, Brooke. Patience. That's what it takes to make cinnamon rolls. You always tell me I don't patience. Have patience for cinnamon rolls. Huh. I always end up with an odd amount too. So my pan of cinnamon rolls isn't always like perfectly. Next, you lightly cover them. We use press and seal. You don't need to seal it down, just okay. lightly, lightly cover them. And then um, put a dish towel over them. And there they will have to sit for an hour and a half to two hours, and then we will bake them. Oh my gosh, really? Two, mm -hmm. An hour and a half to two hours? Yes. Before baking them? As you say, patience. I know. Now that the rolls have risen, you put them in the oven at 350 degrees and bake them for about 20 to 25 minutes. The cinnamon rolls are done. Got the cinnamon rolls all frosted. I used a cream cheese frosting, but you can use a glaze or whatever you like. Looks like they turn out light and fluffy. Brooke is testing them out. Completely delightful. Is it worth the wait? Mm. Totally.